Hello, grade 10s, and welcome to this lesson on revising the measures of central tendency. We will start this lesson on statistics by revising some essential terminology and definitions from previous grades. After that, Eloise will take you through finding the mean, median, and mode of ungrouped data. Statistics deals with collecting, organizing, representing, and interpreting data. The results from the statistical analysis are used to make informed and important decisions. Let's revise a few definitions. Data is a collection of facts or information. Examples of data include the prices of the food at the school tuck shop and the names of all the people in your class. We gather data by making observations, counting, measuring, or from responses to surveys. Data that has not been organized in any way is called raw data. It is important to know what type of data you're working with. This determines which statistical process may be used to analyze the data sets. Let's define the different types of data you will come across. Quantitative data is numerical data that can be counted or measured. We call quantitative data that is obtained by counting discrete data. For example, the number of pupils in the school bus each morning. Quantitative data obtained by measuring is called continuous data. For example, the height of learners in your class. Now that we have revised the basic definitions, we join Eloise who will take us through measures of central tendency for ungrouped data. There are three different kind of averages you can use. Three? What are they? We'll go through them one by one. As an example, let's suppose a school netball team decided to measure the height of each member of the team. But why would they want to do that? Maybe they want to see if their team does better when they have taller players. Anyway, these are their heights. They're all measured in meters. We can take these heights and find three types of averages. They're called the mean, the median and the mode. The mean is when we find the average by adding up the values we have and dividing the total by the number of values used. Okay, this means that we take the height of all the team members and add them together. We then t divide them by 7 because there are 7 members in a team. Okay, so that's going to be 1,75 plus 1,40 plus 1,50 plus 1,50 plus 1,75 plus another 1,75 plus 1,65 and that equals 11,45. Okay, now we take 11,45 and divide it by 7. And that comes to 1,64 meters. That means if the total height of all the seven players is 11,45 meters and all seven were exactly the same height, each one would be about 1,64 meters tall. Oh, so the way we normally work out the average for our marks is called the mean. But I haven't heard anyone call it that before. So tell us more about this median thing. The median is the number in the middle of your set of data. The median is the middle value when all the values are placed in order. To find the median of our netball team's heights, we need to put all the heights in numerical order from the shortest to the tallest. So 1,4 is the shortest. 1,5, then comes 1,65 two times. Then comes 1,75 three times. Very good. It's important to write down every number, even if it occurs more than once, like you've just done. You must write down a number every time it occurs in your set of data. Now, can you see which value is in the middle of your list? One way to do this is to cover the two end numbers. Then, going towards the center, you cover the next two and then the next two, until you're left with a number in the middle. 
So in this case, 1,65 is our median. <laughs> but that was easy. What happens if there's two numbers left in the middle? If there's an even amount of data in a set, you will be left with two middle numbers. So the median will be halfway between these two middle numbers. For example, let's include the height of the netball team's reserve player. She is 1,7 meters tall. So we could add 1,7 here. Now these two numbers are in the middle. This means the median is halfway between them. But how do we find that? You add 1,65 and 1,7 together and then divide by 2. Okay, that's 3,35. Now we divide by 2, which is 1,675. So, 1,675 must be the number halfway between 1,65 and 1,7. And that's the median in this situation. But will it work with a lot of numbers? Like say we had a set of 80. Surely it will still be the number halfway between the two middle numbers. But how do we find the middle numbers? I will take forever to count through all of them. And I'm scared of making a mistake. You've got a point, Cindy. It's easy to make mistakes when you have a large set of data. But think about this. In a set of seven numbers, the median was the fourth number. Now, if you add one to seven, you get eight. And eight divided by two gives you four. You take the position of the first number as one and add the position of the last number, which is seven. Then you add them together and divide by two. Exactly. And you can use this if you have an even amount of data in your set as well. Just now, you asked me about a set with 80 numbers. Well, 80 plus 1 is 81. And 81 divided by 2 is 40 and a half. This means that the median is between the 40th and 41st numbers in a set with 80 numbers. Okay, let's see if I can do one. If I have a set of 115 numbers, 1 plus 115 is 116. And 116 divided by 2 is 58. So the median will be the 58th number. Well done, Sigra. Now for the last kind of average, the mode. The mode is the value that occurs most often. If you like, it's the value that has the highest frequency. In our netball team example, there were three players whose height was 1,75. So this is the most common value or the mode. Let's look at the three averages for our netball team again. The mean was about 1,64 meters. The median was 1,675 meters and the mode was 1,75 meters. Although each one is an average, our netball team example shows us that each kind of average can give you a different answer. Eloise has just shown us how to calculate the mean. To wrap up this lesson, I will show you the mathematical formula for the mean. We use the symbol x bar to represent the mean. The Greek letter sigma is used to show we are adding. Therefore, the mean is equal to the sum of all the values in the data set divided by n, which is the total number of data values. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Discovering Statistics task video. You'll also be able to learn more about statistics on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Get some A's on my report card, STAT.